Good evening. Hello and welcome to this ET Now special. I'm Nan Thara Rai. It was on 15th of May that we at ET Now exclusively told you how the co-promoters of Indigo had had a tiff. Rahul Bhatia as well as Rakesh Gangwal. That tiff became ugly and a public one with Rakesh Gangwal writing letters to the market regulator, the Prime Minister's office, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs, the Finance Ministry, red flagging corporate governance lapses, saying Indigo is worse off than a pan ki dukan, that his business partner was being compared to an emperor with no clothes. Today, we understand from our sources that under the chairmanship of M. Damodran, the two promoters are headed down the path of a resolution. Let me first take you through the contours of what this resolution is going to look like. We understand from our sources that uh, Chairman Damodran has brokered a resolution which includes the expansion of the board. It will have 10 directors. Currently, the board strength is 6. This is how it's going to look like. The independent directors would be doubled from 2 to 4. Rakesh Gangwal would retain his one nomination seat. Rahul Bhatia and his firm Interglobe Enterprises will get nomination for five members, including the CEO, versus the current three. That's as far as the board expansion goes, which we ladies and under gentlemen understand would be reflected in the articles of association. Remember, the shareholder agreement between the two men who came together to form India's largest airline was expiring later this month. It's not just that. Remember, it was corporate governance charges that had been raised by Rakesh Gangwal. We are being told by our sources that there would be clear principles for the standards that will be followed for related party transactions. Rahul Bhatia has maintained this cannot be the real issue, that it only stands at 150 crore rupees off the top line. Nevertheless, this is what the structure for the corporate governance standards is going to look like. There will be a threshold. Beyond that threshold, which we do not know what it is going to be, comparative bids would have to be called. Once the bids are in, and in case the related party wins the bid, which in all understanding will be the ent interglobe enterprises of Rahul Bhatia, a board opinion will be sought. It has to be approved by the audit committee. After the scanning by the audit committee and the board, a third party could be roped in as uh, consultants to see that uh, the related party transaction is indeed fine. In case there's going to be any dilution, in those instances, we would see uh, independent directors taking a final call. This had been a major, major flashpoint between the promoters. That in case there is a dilution, should it be what Rakesh Gangbal allegedly wanted, a golden handshake with him, or should it be the role with the external party consultants? Is this really the end? Was it really about board expansion and principles of corporate governance principles? Is it fair that we've seen nearly 20% of uh, the market capitalization being eroded since the fight became public? Joining me to talk about this is uh, Tushar Cooper, the senior legal, uh, senior legal counsel, Mohit Saraf from LNL, Shailesh Haribakti, chairman of Haribakti and Company, and Mark Martin will be joining us on the phone line. He's, of course, the founder and CEO of Martin Consulting. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. Mohit, I'll come to you first. Uh, you know, you've been coming as a recurring guest, if I could call you that, uh, on the show ever since uh, May 15th when we broke the story of the differences between the two promoters. Now that we know the kind of uh, resolution which has been brokered by M. Damodran, someone who is seen as a torchbearer of uh, corporate governance, the former uh, SEBI chairman and someone against whom Rakesh Gangwal had made insinuations. What do you make of this? Could it really have been about board expansion and these principles of corporate governance? Do you really believe the two corporate, uh, the two co-promoters can work together forever or at least in the near future going forward? When you broke the story, Nantara, there were two aspects. One was expansion of the board. And I, if you look at today, from 6 to 10, uh, Ra, uh, uh, Mr. Gangwal continues to own one, and, and the promoter group, uh, uh, Rahul, has five. So it's really six and four independent. So if you look at the, the governance structure, the board, nothing has really changed. Okay? And, but why it has not changed is very important, because 
Rakesh did not have a right under law, did not have a right under contract. The issue which he brought was a governance issue and he wanted the governance issue to be used to expand board and to expand and in his own entire letter he just could not show that there was a materiality. So really it's a really a face saving device for Rakesh Gangwal because most regulators have said to him probably that show me the breach of law or show me the breach of contract and he can't show. Even if you look at the governance issue, the related party transaction, they will be independent, this will be looked by audit committee, independent directors will vote, these are very standard issues. So really at the end of the day, the fight was to control and at some stage, Mr. Gangwal realized he does not have a right under law, he does not have a right under contract and it is not enshrined in the article and therefore I think this is more or like a face saving this device, he created a ruckus believing that he, had, he was very strong and he probably will get support from the regulators so that he will be able to unseat the promoter who had a controlling right in the articles. And I think now he's realized it and probably he'll continue to be part of the board, he'll be part of all these issues. But I would say really if you look at it, it's a lot of misgovernance. The entire issue has been badly uh, talked to the, all the regulator, erosion of wealth and actually at some stage it put India in a very bad light in front of institutional investors. So all these things, I think regulators should look at it very seriously and see whether Rakesh exceeded the limit and did he created loss because a lot of people may have sold the shares in that panic situation and I would say this is clearly an issue of much larger issue because if you really did not have a basis to allege this level of fraud and paan ki dukaan and you created so much of ruckus, I think this needs to be investigated and just because Mr. Damodaran has had actually brokered a piece, it should not be brushed under the carpet because this is really bad that if promoters who signed us who signed on a deal, they want to change the deal and they use get public into all market. That regulators to change the agreed deal. Okay. Okay, Mohit Sarab, I take that point. I'm going to come back to you. Tushat Cooper, if I could come to you now. You know, Mohit has raised some very pertinent questions. On one side, uh, you know, the co-promoters now working on uh, a resolution, which is, of course, in the larger interest of all stakeholders. But serious allegations have been made by one co-promoter who went to the market regulator, went to all kinds of ministries, cc'd the letter to the prime minister's office, said make Indigo a torchbearer of uh, uh, you know, uh, corporate governance, make it a poster child. On the other side, the same co-promoter is trying to arrive at a resolution which would include board expansion, which I should also point out would include his own dilution, right? Uh, right now you have a smaller board, in the larger board as being, being expanded, he'll get to retain only one board seat nomination. How do you put all of this together? And it, I find it very difficult to believe that this could possibly be the reason for the fight. Articles of Association for Board Expansion and Strengthening the Principles for Corporate Governance for Related Party Transactions, which everybody says is at 150 crores as of now. Okay. Uh, I have a slightly different view from the previous uh, panelist. To the extent of the expansion of the board uh, serving his ends, obviously, you are right, his interest has been diluted in the board and he hasn't really achieved anything by the board expansion. The board expansion which he was really seeking was for a majority of independent directors and not a, um, a control of the board of directors by the Bhatia group. So to the extent that the Bhatia group's representation on the board has been enhanced to five directors, which is 50% of the board, he has not really achieved anything in that direction. Having said that, his claim has always been that he wishes to champion the cause of corporate governance. Earlier, and I don't know what the details of the allegations are relating to his uh, corporate misgovernance issues, uh, which were not out in the public domain apart from the allegations in respect thereof, his grievance was also that these, uh, that the reports which were being made by the auditors in connection with such issues were not being placed before the board and I think he had a legitimate uh, grievance in that regard. He had a legitimate grievance saying that look, barring the fact that the chairman looks into it and says everything is fine, nothing is informed to us of the details and as directors they were entitled to be kept so informed. To the extent that he has achieved uh, a remedial uh, measure 
in that regard, yes, he has progressed because now it is very clear that all such uh, transactions would have to follow what may be a routine process but which was not being followed earlier. So to that extent, yes, he has um, succeeded in achieving some kind of transparency in the corporate governance uh, process of which he was complaining. To the extent that what happens now, I mean, he had raised all these issues and now everybody shakes hands and um, goes home. Uh, well, I think perhaps he did realize that the issues which he has raised is also impacting adversely on the interests of a large body of uh, public shareholders, 20% as was mentioned. And perhaps it was not fair that these issues could continue, should continue to drag um, uh, the company uh, through the mud. So perhaps he feels that having achieved a degree of transparency in the corporate governance process, it is now time to step back and see how this process works. In the event of it not working, he of course continues okay. to retain his remedies to move the uh, NCLT, etc. for mismanagement, etc. I think therefore it's not really a complete okay. loss for him. Okay, we're getting all uh, viewpoints over here, you know, and uh, an interesting bit of information. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a true story. We at ET now understand that uh, at the end of the two-day board meet over the weekend of uh, Interglobe Aviation, the owner of Indigo, Rahul Bhatia served pan to all the board members. Rakesh Gangwal was also present at the meeting. It's interesting because remember, uh, Rakesh Gang uh, Gangwal, uh, drew parallels between indigo and a pan ki dukan. So, you know, that's a side story, an interesting one, I thought. Uh, but having said that, Shailesh Hari Bhakti, you know, this is not a joking matter. You know, while I'm, I was trying to sidetrack and bring some light moments into it with the serving of the pan and how Rahul Bhatia perhaps has taken it in his stride. Uh, you know, maybe a good uh, Punjabi joke, if you can call it that. Uh, but having said that, this, this is no laughing matter. It's a very serious matter. A lot of people have lost money, the minority shareholders. I'm sure institutional investors have been very worried about the relationship between the two co-promoters. One co-promoter has talked about Pan Ki Dukan. Emperor has no clothes while talking about his business partner. Is it even possible and feasible to believe that these two gentlemen can work together going forward? I'm going to ask you what I asked Mohit as well as Tushar too. Could this fight really have been about this? A woman director that still had to be nominated, a board expansion, strengthening uh, a few of the principles for uh, related party transactions, which it turns out were not that large. Uh, I think we are not dealing with related party transactions with the seriousness that it deserves. When two people who are majority share owners of a company uh, are not fully mindful of the interest of the balance shareholding which is held by the minority shareholders. This is an extremely serious problem. And I'm actually feeling uh, very vindicated that a critical issue like related party transactions has now come to the fore in all corporate governance discussions in our country. And this is something that happened because somebody took it up and seriously pursued it. And what I believe the resolution indicates, and because it has been done by a person of no less uh, a stature than Mr. Damodaran, that the related party transactions which are not fully at arm's length and not in the ordinary course of business will become a thing of the past. And I think that's a very significant victory for the minority shareholders, which we should not belittle. Second, on the board structure, an expanded board with a larger number of independent directors gives a far better voicing of uh, alternative points of view on the board, which will then bring out uh, for the long-term sustainability and the long-term growth and profitability of Indigo, a much better outcome. And complying with the regulatory requirement, again, should not be treated as something which is trivial. To have the right composition, including a woman director, is an important issue and should not be brushed aside by uh, anybody, particularly where a large number of people are involved, a large 
part of India's population is involved, such an important airline is involved. And therefore, I think this has been a, a, a tremendous learning experience of how important issues of governance can perhaps lead to a dissension. But once they are sorted out, I don't see why the original position where Mr. Gangwal was a, uh, a, a well-wisher, a distant uh, person who is not part of the management process here on, uh, on, on a day-to-day -day basis, but feels strongly about exercising his rights on governance, has asserted that. And now there is this resolution which has come up, which will bring the whole uh, uh, situation at Indigo back to normal. So I applaud this and I think we need to recognize the importance of governance and its individual aspects. All viewpoints you're getting over here uh, on this special show that we're doing at ET now on India's largest airline, which incidentally in the last quarter reported its highest ever a quarterly profit. Uh, having said that, I'm going to ask my producer to also show you the intraday chart of uh, uh, Interglobe Aviation, the owner of Indigo. We did see a good reaction on the stock market as soon as ETNA broke the story of M. Damodaran brokering a resolution between uh, the two factions that had been fighting, the two co-promoters. And I will also want to show you the last three-month chart. Have a look at that as well. And you can see how Interglobe has been kind of all over the place since this story broke out. Martin, Mark Martin, let me come to you now with that. You know, we believe that all kind of letters had been written by the institutional investors. Obviously, they would have been worried about what exactly is going on. Indigo has been a darling of the stock market. It's a top pick uh, when we talk about the aviation stocks as well. Do you think the markets will be convinced that uh, this is the end game, that uh, from now that uh, the two promoters will indeed work well together, uh, that uh, this resolution uh, will last for a long time, and it's the end game to the fight? And uh, thanks for having me today. Oh, well, you know, I mean, I'm not sure about, well, I'm not really kind of sure of whether, whether calling Indigo or Pan Ki Dukan was right. I was hoping Gangwal called it a... Uh, Daru ki, Daru ki de they, they will probably come to a faster resolution with everybody getting drunk. You know, so, so just to kind of really talk about a precedent, we, do, we don't have, a, at least in this country, an effective precedent for the board. Usually, most airline boards are, are, are 13, 15, and 17 members. If you look at all the airline groups from, you know, from Wizz Air to EasyJet, Ryanair, AirAsia, uh, uh, there's a very specific reason for that because what happens is that you have the independent director whose vote counts but he's independent and you have one representative of the governance risk and compliance group. So um, now, so technically you know, increasing the board to 10 is actually the board is 9 with one independent director. So it's still 9. It's not, it's not in effect 10. Now, um, I don't think this is going to be the end. I mean, sure, Gangwal was taking his pot shots at, uh, at Bhatia, and even whatever that he's been accusing Bhatia and Interglobe of, which was your RPTs, are, are first of all absolutely baseless. They're un they were unjustified, and, they were, and as we know, you know, the truth does prevail. Um, going forward, you know, I, I don't think it's, it's everybody shakes hands and goes back home and... and uh, and hope for a new day. I think this is this is going to continue. We will see this, you know, rear its ugly head back in some shape or form as we go along. In a way, it's good because I I believe the investor community and everybody out there, you know, reserve a right and have a right to know what's how, how healthy our companies are. And uh, as far as the markets is concerned, I'd probably say it's momentary. I think you know it's something to cheer and something that. At least Indigo's finally got over its ridiculousness. But, uh, but you know, uh, 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 bottom line, the airline business is extremely Momentary susceptible to risk. You know, I mean, fuel... Right, it is a very risky business. In fact, Mohit Sarab, that has been one of the points that Rahul Bhatia has been raising. Uh, that, I, I, you know, that he gave 50% equity as a, uh, you know, pretty much as a gift uh, to Rakesh Gangwal. He's taken on all of the financial risk. He's put uh, all the money into the airline. 
Uh, so having said that, at the end of today, when you hear about M. Damodaran perhaps being successful in working on a resolution, we're of course waiting for the two gentlemen in question to sign on the dotted line and then until then, while anything is possible, this is good news that should be lapped up uh, by corporate governance uh, watchers as well as India Inc. at large. What is the big lesson for co-promoters over here? What, are the, what is the big lesson? I think the issue which they have raised, corporate governance is an important issue and I think we are not belittling it. But the manner in which it was raised was pathetic in my view. And I think the key learning is that, that prepare yourself, look at the issues, look at the materiality, look at the law, look at the regulation. When you are dealing with a company of a 40,000 crore market cap, don't be emotional. And, and think about it. I think Gangwal should have prepared himself. Did he, there, was there a breach of law? Was there a breach of contract? And if it was not, then going to this extent, I think in my view, it's a misgovernance. It's a minority shareholder who is taking the company to a right. In my view, that's an important issue. And uh, the, it, the process, the responsible? manner... Mohit well, Sarab, are you then saying that Rakesh Gangwal should be held responsible? Words. If I'm reading between the lines and the corollary of what you're saying is that Rakesh Gangwal must be made accountable to the investors and to the company for the accusations that he has made, is that what you're saying? Absolutely. I think so. This is misgovernance that without any fact, you make people so nervous about a company, you make international investors nervous. This is pathetic. This can probably, only you can get away in India. This is a Anjali, serious you, you issue. The company lost 20% of wealth up. overnight. And, and, and right now, if you, if you look at the board yeah, composition, he still has, he was one out of six. Now he's one out of ten. So he has been diluted in that sense. So, uh, you know, I'm running out of time, so I'm, go I'm going to end with uh, uh, Tushar Cooper over here. You've been the contrarian and you have contradicted Mohit Saraf here. Mohit Saraf, very clear that Rakesh Gangwal must be held accountable. 20% uh, of the market capitalization had been eroded. For what uh, reason was that done? The manner in which it was done was pathetic, the way he raised the accusations. Do you still stand by what you said, that while it's okay to red flag, the manner in which it was done? Do you think uh, on one end you're going to attempt a truce and legally then what happens to the complaints that are pending before the market regulator, finance ministry, prime minister's office, etc.? Okay, on the first aspect as to whether uh, Gangwal behaved irresponsibly in raising such allegations, I don't quite share uh, the views which were just expressed by uh, Mohit. I personally believe that he had a right and uh, he was certainly within his rights to raise such issues. He had sought to raise such issues at board meetings to which he was not given satisfactory responses. I, I repeat, I'm not saying that the allegations are um, uh, correct. I'm not saying that there were in fact something which was dodgy or uh, suspicious. But he was entitled to raise these issues and to insist on some parameters being laid down for interparty uh, related interparty transactions. Uh, to the extent that this was not being done, uh, I agree with Mr. Hari Bhakti that uh, uh, good service has been done in trying to raise these issues and laying down some kind of principles which going forward should be followed by corporate entities in future and by promoters when they engage in such transactions. I don't believe that he can or should be held accountable for market fall as a result of the issues which he raised. They were, in my view, legitimate issues. As I repeat, it is not that being a legitimate okay. issue, it meant that the Bhatia group were guilty of some um, illegalities or irresponsibilities, but he was entitled to raise them. As to what will happen in future uh, with regard to the complaints okay. already made, uh, it is possible that taking into account public interest, the regulator may say, all right, we shan't investigate these matters further. And uh, maybe the issues will be closed. Maybe the regulator will take a view and say, no, we need to lay down some guidelines for such transactions going forward.
So the ball could also be, is likely to be in SEBI's court and what it decides to do. The uh, company secretary of Interglobe Aviation, incidentally, uh, was at the SEBI office on Monday uh, uh, deposing and talking about all of the allegations that had been raised. Gentlemen, we are out of time. I'd like to thank all four of you for taking the time out and joining us here on this ET Now special. It's a mega exclusive story. We told you there was a tip and now there's a resolution in sight. Many thanks for watching.